<clears throat> Hi, uh, we've talked about uh, dipole-dipole interactions as a kind of intermolecular force. Now we're going to talk about a much stronger kind of intermolecular force, um, hydrogen bonding. Um, now uh, the the uh, the name can be a little bit confusing because hydrogen bonds are not covalent bonds; they are a kind of intermolecular force. Okay, so. That's the main thing to get straight, first of all, they're not covalent bonds. Right, now what you need for hydrogen bonds is you need um, you need a hydrogen atom which is attached to a very electronegative atom. So it has to be oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. There are three most electronegative elements here. And you have to have a hydrogen attached to that. And what that will, what that will do, if the hydrogen is such a very electronegative one, it will make it, it will give it a partial positive charge. And also because, um, well, hydrogen's only got one electron only, hasn't it? So uh, when you've, you, you're pulling that electron away, you, you can, quite often it's described as a denuded um, H nucleus, okay? So you've got a little hydrogen nucleus, just one proton in it, and all the electrons have been pulled away from it. So it's a, it's a little point of positive charge. And that can be attracted to uh, a lone pair. So maybe this is, you should draw hydrogen bonds like this. And what you need then is you need a lone pair. This could be attracted to a lone pair, but this has got to be, X has got to be a very electronegative element. It's got to be O, N, or F. Uh, it can't be chlorine. It can't be a chlorine atom because the uh, the lone pair on a chlorine, even though chlorine is pretty electronegative, uh, the the lone pair and the chlorine will be it will be in the third shell. Okay, so it'll be bigger and the, the the negative charge is more spread out. Okay, so it's only only O N or F. So uh, let's think about hydrogen bonding in in uh, the most common molecule let's think about water okay now water liquid water has got hydrogen bonds uh, between molecules let's think why well oxygen has got two lone pairs isn't it so i drawn the lone pairs there and it's got a bonding pair to the hydrogen and another bonding pair to that hydrogen um, okay so and this hydrogen is attached to the electronegative oxygen, so it's denuded, yeah? Right, so what they can do is they can form a hydrogen bond uh, to another water molecule, so there's a lone pair. Like that. Okay, and of course, a hydrogen bond could form to, the lone pair could form to this hydrogen. These lone pairs could hydrogen bond to the hydrogens on other water molecules, and so on. So that is, that is uh, basically, uh, that's just showing one hydrogen bond there. I tried to draw the hydrogen bond longer um, than the covalent bond because they are a lot longer. A covalent bond, well, we've, you, you, uh, covalent bond, I suppose an average value is about 300 kilojoules per mole. Um, whereas an H bond, has a value of about 20 kilojoules per mole. So it's about, you know, it's less than a tenth as strong. It's less strong, it's going to be longer. Okay. Um, I just think, well, why do they get called hydrogen bonds? Well, I think, uh, obviously, here, you've got a very high electron density, haven't you? You've got two electrons between that oxygen and that hydrogen. Um, so you've got some electron density between the atoms. Um, and if you think here, you've also got a it's much lower electron density, but you have got electron density between those two atoms because the lone pair will be attracted towards that delta positive hydrogen like a little bit. Um, okay, so that is what hydrogen bonds are. And it means that water has got a pretty high boiling point. Okay, so water um, boils, we know, at 100 degrees C. Um, let's think of something similar. So if you go H2S, so I'm thinking about the next element down group. Um, 
group six in the periodic table, H2S has got a boiling point of, I think, about, about minus 50 degrees C. It's a lot lower. Okay, so water has got a very high boiling point um, for a molecule of its size, and it's because you're getting hydrogen bonds there between them. Okay. Now, um, what we need to do now is we need to think about our essential conditions for hydrogen bonds being able to form, which is a lone pair on O, N, or F there. And we must have a hydrogen which is attached to one of those very electro electronegative elements. So let's have a look and see which molecules can. Okay. So if you want to, okay. There's molecules. If you want to pause the video, I don't want to do that. If you want to pause that video and um, and then have a have a think about which ones can hydrogen bond, and then come back to it and see if you've got the right answers. Okay. So you can pause it now if you like. Okay, let's go through these molecules then. Which ones can hydrogen bond? Water, yeah, it can do because we've got to, so this is water, do this one first. Yeah, uh, you've got a delta positive on the hydrogen, which is attached to the oxygen, of course, always has two lone pairs, forms two bond pairs, two lone pairs. Yeah, so that, that one can. Pure water, you will get hydrogen bonds between the molecules. Let's think about ammonia here. Okay, we've got a lone pair on the nitrogen here. Yeah. We've got one lone pair and three bonding pairs in ammonia. All of those hydrogens are partial positive charge on them. So yes, they are de this is a denuded proton. It's very um, exposed, positive charge. It can hydrogen bond to the lone pair on a nitrogen. So that one can, the water can, ammonia can. Let's now go to ethanol, this one here, which is a little bit more familiar. So we, right, now can this one hydrogen bond? Well, we've got lone pairs on this oxygen here. So that looks hopeful. But have we got a hydrogen attached to an oxygen? We haven't. All of these hydrogens, they're attached to carbons. So they are not denuded. They're not particularly delta positive. So they are not going to be attracted to the lone pairs on, the, on, the, on another ethanol's uh, oxygens. So no, that one can't. Uh, hydrogen fluoride, next one here, okay. This one can, of course, because fluorine is very electronegative. We've got a hydrogen attached to one of the most electronegative elements. And fluorine will have three lone pairs in it. Fluorine has got three lone pairs and one bonding pair. You know, we just, just if you think about our, the top right of our periodic table, we've got N, O, F, okay, they always form who has got eight electrons in the full and they're actually showing the compounds. Fluorine is three lone pairs and one bonding pair. Oxygen is two bonding pairs and two, so two lone pairs and two bonding pairs. Nitrogen is one lone pair and three bonding pairs. Okay. So let's now go to ethanol, okay, alcohol, which is here. And that can because we've got hydrogen there is attached to an oxygen. These hydrogens are no good because they're not attached to an electronegative one, but that one is. And we've got lone pairs on the oxygen, so they are ethanol molecules and hydrogen bond to each other. Hydrogen chloride here. Uh, well, chlorine is pretty electronegative, and so that's going to be delta positive hydrogen, but we don't have, it's not, um, we don't have these lone pairs on the chlorine it can't hydrogen bond to them. The lone pairs have got to be on O, N, or F. Okay, so no, you can't get that in. In HCl, then you're not going to get um, hydrogen bonds. You're going to get weaker intermolecular forces. You're going to get dipole, dipole interactions. Same with ethanol. You will get dipole, dipole interactions because that is delta minus there and delta plus there, but no hydrogen bonds. I just put dipole, dipole there. Um, this one here, which is diethyl, that's why I've written ether, it's proper name is diethyl ether, that's ether, first anesthetic that ever was ever used. Um, uh, you're not going to get hydrogen bonds there. Yes, you do have a 
lone pairs on the oxygen, but you don't have hydrogen attached to oxygen. The hydrogens are all attached to um, carbon, so that's no good. No, you're not going to get that in that. Um, you'll get uh, dipole-dipole interactions in ether, but you will not get hydrogen bonds. Let's look at this one, fluoromethane, and immediately looks hopeful, doesn't it? Because you've got a very electronegative element. You've got fluorine. It's got three lone pairs, so that's good. But then you realize, no, you don't have a hydrogen, which is uh, attached to an OAN. Or if these hydrogens are all attached to carbon, so they're not sufficiently delta positive, not sufficiently partially positive to, to form a hydrogen bond. Right. The last few now, methylamine. Okay, methylamine, so it's a bit like ammonia, but you've got this carbon attached to the nitrogen instead of a three hydrogens. Well, you have a lone pair on the nitrogen, don't you? Yeah. And these hydrogens are attached to electronegative nitrogen, so yeah, they can hydrogen bond, and you've got a lone pair, so yes, that one can form. You can get hydrogen bonds in methylamine liquid. Uh, no problem with that one. This one here is called trimethyl. Uh, trimethylamine okay now you do have a lone pair on the nitrogen uh, you have a lone pair but you do not have a hydrogen attached to O N or F so this one uh, no you will not get um, hydrogen bonding you might get some dipole dipole interactions but not hydrogen bonding Okay, so that's our introduction to um, to H bonding. Hopefully, you got most of those right. Let's just draw how two ammonia molecules could 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 um, could form. They quite they quite often ask you to do this. Is they'll say in the question they'll say draw a hydrogen bond between two ammonia molecules, and they quite often say draw all lone pairs. And uh, draw all partial charges that's so that means right delta plus delta minus on anything which is um which has a partial charge okay so ammonia yeah you've got a lone pair there right, maybe let's draw um uh, so that we'll draw the hydrogen that could be attracted to the hydrogen on another ammonia molecule which i'm drawing here Okay, so put all the partial positive charges on that. So that's going to be delta minus there. These are all delta positive. Uh, okay, so in liquid ammonia, you are going to get um, hydrogen bonding, and the boiling point of liquid ammonia is quite a lot higher than you would expect from a molecule of that size, and that's due to the fact you've got the strongest kind of intermolecular forces there. Okay, let's leave that there.